Hey, 42 here. I think it was the philosopher Bubba from Forrest Gump who said, shrimp is the fruit of the sea. To which you may reply, no it's not, shrimp are crustaceans. Which is true of course, but for argument's sake, let me just ask you, what even is a fruit? You've heard that little factoid that a tomato is actually a fruit, no doubt. The most popular fruit in the world, it turns out. The other contender for top banana is, well, the banana. But even bananas can't be framed as fruit. Not really. Distantly related to ginger, the banana tree is actually a herb, and the stem is made of pulp, not wood. The banana itself is a berry, just like avocados, cucumbers, and watermelons. But unlike raspberries, mulberries, and strawberries, which are not berries at all. Neither are blackberries. Those are things people used to write emails on in the 90s. To further blur these linguistic lines, botanists call things like strawberries false fruit, or pseudocarps even though they don't look anything like carp. Some shrimp, however, do look like bananas. Just ask the banana prawn. So, it seems Bubba may have been onto something when he celebrated shrimp's fruitiness. Or perhaps he just polished off a bag of those strangely addictive shrimp and banana sweets, which, for the first time in my life, are now starting to make sense. Anyway, it's time to bring this quirky comparison to an end. After all, bananas and shrimp belong to totally different kingdoms of the natural world. Bananas have been selectively bred by humans for more than 7,000 years. Those little black spots are the remnants of seeds that were originally much bigger and made them virtually inedible. And today, in Uganda, we're even genetically engineering a new super banana packed with extra vitamin A and iron. Shrimp, on the other hand, that's the last time we talk about bananas in this video, I promise, followed a Darwinian process known as divergent evolution. When populations of the same species are separated, usually geographically, each group develops distinct attributes to adapt to the challenges unique to their environment. Millennia later, those divergent populations lose the ability to breed and eventually, something called speciation occurs, which is when new and distinct species are born. And hence, we arrive at the hero of today's video, the pistol shrimp. The word shrimp is sometimes used as an insult, but despite their diminutive stature, pound for pound, or actually gram for gram, some divergent species of shrimp have evolved some of the deadliest attacks in the natural world. Take the mantis shrimp, which holds the Guinness World Record for the strongest self-powered strike of any animal. Although, like fruit that pretends to be carp, this is not a shrimp at all, but a stompter pod. On the other claw, the pistol shrimp is the real deal. You may not have heard of it, but you may have heard it. Only, you probably didn't realise what it was. If you've ever been scuba diving or snorkelling near a coral reef, you'll likely have heard the snapping or popping noises emanating through the water, like you've just submerged your head in a bowl of Rice Krispies. But that wasn't puffed rice you perceived, it was the popping of the pistol shrimp. Such has been their evolutionary excellence that hundreds of types of pistol shrimp exist in the world's oceans, and though they're generally found in warmer waters, there are also cold and freshwater varieties. They're pretty adaptable, and habitats include oyster reefs, seagrass flats, sponges, and the sandy ocean floor, where they build burrows. Sometimes called snapping shrimp, they grow to between 3 and 5 centimetres and weigh about 25 grams. Looking at this small speck of sea life, you wouldn't think it poses much of a threat to anything. But hold on a minute. Crop into that claw, and you'll notice something obscure. That's one hell of a chunky claw. Half the length of its body, in fact. The thing is, it isn't really a claw at all. It's a goddamn revolver. Functioning in a similar way to a trigger and hammer mechanism on a gun. 
One side of the claw ratchets open 90 degrees, just like cocking a handgun. Then, with his weapon primed, the shrimp holds his shot with his prey in mind. Then bang! The claw snaps shut so quickly, it's almost imperceptible, even on the slickest slow-mo cameras. But this precisely primed pistol just fired a projectile of pure water that petrified its prey. We think of the ocean as peaceful, perhaps the only noise being the lapping of the waves. But the sea is a symphony of snapping sounds thanks largely to the pistol shrimp. A single snap can be as loud as 218 decibels. By comparison, traffic is about 70 decibels. A sonic boom from an aircraft is 120. And gunshots reach just 140. Actually, the pistol shrimp's water-dwelling neighbour, the sperm whale, is one of the few animals that's louder than it, making noises exceeding 230 decibels. However, considering sperm whales can weigh up to 80 tonnes and are roughly 3.5 million times the size of the pistol shrimp, I think we all know who's the real ocean goat. Hint, it's not the giant floating sperm monster. Sometimes huge colonies of pistol shrimp can be found living in sponges. The almighty din emitted by this crustacean crowd is so loud it can cloud underwater communications. During the Second World War, it was discovered that the racket of a shrimp colony could conceal submarines from sonar detection. I'm sure it was by no coincidence it was around this time that research into the pistol shrimp really began in earnest. For a long time, scientists believed it was simply the contact of the claws as they come together that created the noise. Just like when humans clap. Turns out, their logic was fishy. For there was much more going on inside that claw. Biologists studying snapping shrimps discovered a novel joint, previously unknown to science. It's a type of slip joint where the only thing keeping the claw cocked open is a small ridge or fulcrum. Until a point when the force is so overwhelming that the fulcrum is overcome, and so the claw snaps shut. The slip joint achieves this snapping action far faster than any other configuration of claw. So, how exactly does this supreme snapping generate a bullet made of water? Well, the moving part of the claw has a rounded piece at its base that acts as a plunger. This plunger perfectly slots into a socket on the thick side of the claw. If you've ever made coffee with a French press or used a bicycle pump, you'll know that plenty of pressure can build up behind a plunger. In the case of the pistol shrimp, it's water, not air, that's trapped inside the socket and squeezed out with significant force. All this water needs to go somewhere and there's a little groove which directs a jet of water forwards as it escapes from the claw. This is no ordinary water gun though. The claw closes at such high speeds that it creates something called cavitation bubbles. And cavitation bubbles means trouble. In fluid dynamics, Bernoulli's principle states that when a liquid travels at high speed, it simultaneously experiences a drop in pressure. As a result, small air bubbles in the liquid expand. But when the liquid slows down again, the pressure suddenly increases and the bubbles implode. This causes a shock wave along with a snap. Captains must be cautious of cavitation because it can damage a ship's propellers. And when some fish, like tuna, move too quickly through the water, they create cavitation bubbles behind them that can damage their own tails. In fact, tuna are frequently found with tail lesions created by these deadly bubbles. But in the case of the pistol shrimp, the cavitation bubble is used to stun or kill its prey. This bubble bullet travels at 97 kilometers per hour. As well as a deafening crack, it causes a brief increase in temperature, heating the surrounding water to 4,700 degrees Celsius, which isn't far off the surface of the sun at 5,500 C. The sound of the collapsing bubble also produces a flash of light, which is something known as sonoluminescence. The flash is so brief that it's imperceptible to the human eye. Although this tiny terror possesses titanic power, it uses it mostly to defend its territory. 
lying in wait inside a burrow until its prey passes close enough to unleash bubbly death. Although the pistol shrimp has been known to use its claw for communication too. One particular species, the Randall's pistol shrimp, forms a symbiotic relationship with the goby fish. They will live in the same burrow together, and the pistol shrimp acts as the homemaker, digging and maintaining the tunnels, even closing off the entrance at night when it's bedtime. Meanwhile, the goby protects the shrimp when the two head topside. The shrimp has poor eyesight, and so the goby acts as the lookout. One of the shrimp's antenna will rest on the goby's tail fin, and if the goby flicks its fin, the shrimp instantly feels it and retreats to the safety of the burrow. Beyond its massive size and ability to generate freakish underwater fireball explosions, there's something else amazing about this colossal claw. It can be regrown. Sure, there are other animals in nature that are able to regenerate lost body parts, like geckos who lose their tails, but the snapping shrimp is perhaps the most spectacular. Parted from its super claw, the remaining smaller claw starts to grow, which soon becomes the new snapping claw. Meanwhile, the stump of the old snapping claw begins to grow into a new claw too, to replace the normal nipper. So basically the claws end up swapping sides, along with all of the necessary rewiring that is needed to regulate the sensory input and motor control. In the world we live in today, language is not often used sparingly. People use words like incredible, which is supposed to mean something that's impossible to believe, to describe something like a potato salad. Advertisers use phrases like small but mighty to describe a concentrated dishwashing liquid. But I think we can all agree that in the case of the pistol shrimp, such superlatives are especially deserved. Because the pistol shrimp truly is a stunning fruit. Thanks for watching.